Do you ever see deprecation warnings after you update your Python packages? This week we'll talk about what deprecation warnings are, why we have to have them, and what you should do when you see them. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. So let's say you've got some script and it's running great, but then you update your Python packages, you run a conda update all command or something like that, and suddenly deprecation warnings start to pop up or other warnings telling you things about functions that you're using. While your script is still running, if you ignore these for too long, it will eventually break. So this week, I want to show you how to upgrade to MetPy 0.7 talk about some of the deprecations that we've implemented in 0.7 and discuss why we did this. And it's really good for all of us in the end, but it's something that a lot of times users don't get to know the logic behind on the side of the developers. So to start off with, we're going to make a little working script here in MetPy 0.6.1. If you don't know which version of MetPy you're running, you can use the conda list command on your terminal, or if you're in a notebook or a Python shell, you can just import MetPy and then print MetPy dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. You'll often hear these underscores uh, two and then a word and then two referred to as dunder for double underscore. Uh, these are just uh, you can sort of think of them as private attributes. So you can see here that we're running 0.6.1. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of our standard imports. I'm going to import metpy.calc, metpy.units, and numpy, so we can go ahead and make some fake data and run a metpy calculation function. Okay, and now I'm going to calculate vorticity. So we're going to need a U and a V wind and a DX and a DY for our grid of winds that we're going to pass the vorticity function. You can also look this up in the docs if you don't remember or use our shift tab command, which I'll remind you of uh, when we actually do the vorticity calculation here. But for now, let's go ahead and make an array of ones for U. So U mp.1s, I'm going to specify the size, I want a 10 by 10 grid here, and don't forget to attach units, so I'm going to say that this is in knots. For v, I'm just going to multiply u by minus 2, dx, uh, let's just say 1 meter, we're doing some very small scale study here, and dy, we could say 2 meters if we wanted. Okay, so now we have uv, dx, and dy. So let's go ahead and calculate vorticity. So mpcalc dot, it was vertical vorticity, remember I hit tab to bring that up. If I hit shift tab here, we see the truncated doc string, so it's uv, dx, dy. So uv, dx, dy. We see that we get a warning here that is saying uh, that the dimension order is using the default setting currently xy. This will change to yx in the next version. Uh, it's recommended that you specify the appropriate ordering for your data by passing the dim order argument. So this is one of the changes that happened in MetPy 0.7. We've been warning on it uh, for a while now. Uh, just make sure that you're passing the proper dim order. Uh, doing this lets us make more data work out of the box, as a lot of data is in latitude longitude, or yx. And this has actually been warned since 0.5.1. So this isn't a deprecation necessarily, but this is a change that we've been warning about for a while, and one that's worth noting, because that warning will go away in 0.7 as we've made the change. Okay, so now we've done our calculation. Let's go ahead and upgrade to MetPy 0.7, 
and see what happens. So I'm back over at my terminal now. I'm going to type conda upgrade metpy. So you see it found metpy 0.7 and wants to know if we want to update it. Just press enter for the default yes here, and we're done. So that didn't take very long at all. Now let's go back to our notebook and see what happens. So we're back in our notebook here. I'm gonna go up to the kernel menu and select restart and run all. So this is going to restart my Python kernel, which will pull in the new version of metpy, so 0.7, and it will run all the cells again. So you can see now, we're on metpy 0.7. Everything ran, but now we have a different warning coming up. This is a deprecation warning, as it says, metpy deprecation warning. The vvorticity function was deprecated in version 0.7, which is what we're on. It has been renamed vorticity. So this tells you what you need to do here. And in fact, if we remove the v underscore, you can see that the deprecation warning is gone. And we have a warning saying, we're actually using YX now. This was implemented in this version 0.7. Make sure you're doing the right thing. This warning will go away in the next version. And then there will be no warnings on vorticity. We try to do this to make sure that you know when things change, even if you don't read the release notes or keep up with the documentation. That way we do our very best to make sure that we don't break you and you not know about it. So now that you've seen a deprecation warning, I want to talk a little bit about what it fundamentally is and why we do it. So deprecation is when we remove or replace functionality in the future. So we're going to be taking this function out or we're going to be renaming it just like we saw. And that change is coming, but we want to tell you about it now. And we're going to tell you what you can do about it. So we do this for a few reasons. The first is maintainability. We don't want to get burdened by old bad design decisions. So for example, V underscore vorticity was not necessarily the clearest or most necessary name here. So we went ahead and changed that to vorticity. We don't want to have that persist for many, many versions until lots of people are implementing it. And then we decide to change it. So we try to make these maintainability changes as early as we can. Also, when we make uh, API improvements, so anytime that we do something to clean up the way that you interact with MetPy or any of the other packages like Siphon that we maintain, we're going to give you a warning that these things are changing instead of just instantly breaking you. It also helps us when we're slowly pivoting to any new paradigm. So for example, as we start to integrate X-Array into MetPy as sort of a, a gridded data model, you'll probably see some warnings as we're moving to use X-Array more and more. It also lets you get around other packages deprecation or issues. So maybe NumPy is deprecating a function and we have to change the way we're doing it, or we have to change the way that we do it in examples. We wanna warn you about that. And it gives you time to adjust because we're not just instantly breaking it. So the best thing you can do is just follow the instructions when they come up on deprecation warnings or warnings in general. They're not there to be ignored. They're there to help you and make sure that things don't break in the future when you might really need them. So just keep up with them and try not to get behind. Even though MetPy is still zero point, we're not at a, a 1.0 version, we try not to do this lightly. We don't want to break things unnecessarily or make you change things all the time. That's one of the great things about not being 1.0 yet though, is we can do this and fix errors in our design decisions very quickly. We would also like you to give us some feedback. So if we change something and it is not a better implementation for you, we'd like to know why and how we can help address that. Also make sure you take a look at the docs after every release. So take a look at the release notes. Generally in there we have a list of things that we changed or things that are coming up. So a few functions that have been changed in MetPy 0.7 uh, H underscore convergence is now divergence. V underscore vorticity is vorticity as we saw. And there were two functions called convergence underscore vorticity and shearing underscore stretching deformation. 
those are actually going to be going away. So those were performance optimizations that we had made because calculating convergence and vorticity was not the most performant thing with the way we were doing it in 0.6 and prior. We've now implemented uh, some of our own math under the hood here that makes these things much faster and those optimizations are just unnecessary and provide more of a maintenance burden and more things for you to need to remember. So just use those functions individually now. So the divergence function, vorticity, shearing deformation, and stretching deformation. So in summary, make sure you pay attention to these messages that come up. And we're just trying to help make a better API for you to interact with and a better package for you to use. If you keep up with these, it's generally not going to be an issue. In fact, a find and replace solves 90% of these issues. For example, find all V underscore vorticity and replace with vorticity should take just a minute in your editor. But if you do run into any problems or have any questions about why we did something, we're always happy to chat with you. So you can get a hold of us on Twitter at MetPy. You can hop in the Gitter chat room and chat with us when we're working on the software. And you can always send feedback to support python at unidata.ucar.edu. If you liked this MetPy Monday, don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and check out the Unidata Facebook page. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.